In this tutorial, we're going to solve equations that have consecutive number word problems. Copy this topic into your table of contents and tape or glue the notes to page 16. When you're finished, unpause the video and read along with the tutorial. At the top of your notes, it says that consecutive integers are numbers that are in counting order. And here are a few examples. 1, 2, 3, 4, or even negative 23, negative 22, negative 21, etc., etc. So consecutive integers are numbers that are in a row or are increasing by 1 each time. So each time that I go up to the next integer, I'm adding 1 to the value before. So if I want to go up from 1, plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. And the same is true even if you're a negative integer. Negative 23 plus 1 is 20, negative 22, and so on. So each time you want to write a series of consecutive integers, if you don't know the first integer, then the one that's going to come next is mathematically one value higher. And then the one that's going to come after that is mathematically one value higher than this one. So if the one before you is n plus 1, and you're going to add 1 to that, then technically that's n plus 2. And then if you want to add 1 to that, n plus 2 plus 1 more would give you n plus 3. So consecutive integers have a pattern of increasing by 1 from the previous value. And the reason it's 1, 2, 3 is because the first value is the one that we're starting with and we're using that unknown each time. So the first one is one space away, but the next number would be two spaces away, and the third number would be three spaces away, and that's why the pattern looks like this. For the second part of your notes, you'll see that they're talking about consecutive even integers. And those are numbers that start out even, but they skip every other number so that they can remain even. So if you start at 6, you're going to skip 7 and go to 8. So I'm not increasing by 1, I'm actually increasing by 2 each time. And that's why this series, starting with n, would jump to n plus 2. And then it would jump n plus 4. Now the reason that this pattern is going by 2's is not because we're talking about even integers it's skipping a value, which is why it's n plus 2. Not because it starts even, it's plus 2 because we're skipping a value. So when we look at the third section of our notes, and we're talking about odd integers, look at its pattern. It's exactly the same as the even integer pattern. And that's not because that they're even, they're actually odd, but they are skipping every other number. So if you're skipping every other number, you're still going by twos, whether you start out odd or you start out even. So don't get confused between these two questions. If you're even or odd, you follow the same skip pattern. So let's take a look at a couple of examples before you try some on your own. So you can find this last section at the bottom of your notes and you can refer back to these algebraic expressions that will help you translate your word problems. So just watch these next few examples and then you can try some on your own. Do not copy these down, just watch and learn. Find four consecutive integers. So consecutive integers go by ones. Find four consecutive integers with a sum of 54. So my first integer is unknown, my second integer is one more than that, my third integer is one more than that, so n plus 1 plus 1, and then my fourth integer is one more than that, which is n plus 2 plus 1, or n plus 3. So these four integers, so my first integer plus my second integer plus my third integer plus my fourth integer has to have a sum of 54. Now some people put parentheses around each of these values here just to represent 
that they are first, second, third, and fourth, but they're not necessary. Either way, you can still combine all of these like terms. So I have four n's here, right? n plus n plus n plus n. So I have four n's and I have two, three, four, five, six as my constant. And now all I need to do to simplify this is use my properties of equality here. So 4n is equal to 48, divide by 4, and then I get n is equal to 12. But I'm not going to box this, because that's not actually my answer. That is one of my integers, but I need to find all four. So I'm going to take this value, right, and I'm going to plug it in here. So 12 is my first, 12 plus 1 is my next, 12 plus 2 is my third, and 12 plus 3 would be my fourth, right? So I have 12, 13, 14, and 15. So 12, 13, 14, and 15. Those are my four consecutive integers. Just watch and learn for this second example. Find three consecutive odd integers. Remember, odd integers skip a value. So my first one is n, but my next one is going to be n plus 2. I know that my answer needs to be odd, but my pattern is not odd. And then I need my third consecutive, which would be n plus 4. They have a sum of 141, so here we go. First, second, and third, a sum of 141. Combine like terms use my property of equality. So this would be 135. Divide, divide, and would be 45, I think. Again, I'm not going to box this because that's only part of my answer. 45 is my first, 45 plus 2 is my second, and 45 plus 4 would be my third. So that actually makes my answer 45, 47, and 49. And those are my three odd consecutive values. All right, last one. Find three consecutive even integers. Right, so that's a skip value there with a sum of negative 48. So even means I skip by twos. So first, second, third values, a sum of negative 48. So combine like terms. Use my inverses here. That's negative 54, right? Yep. And n is equal to negative 18. Again, don't box this because that's only part of your answer. 18, oops, negative 18 plus 2. And negative 18 plus 4 gives me solutions of negative 18, negative 16, and negative 14. Okay, now it's your turn. Pause the video, write down these English sentences, translate the problems, solve them, and then box all of your solutions. When you're done, unpause the video to check your answers. Okay, now that you've had a chance to pause the video and give it a try, let's see if you got these three responses correct. I'm going to go through each one of these three examples for you to check your work, and you should pause the video if you need some more time to check over your responses to see if they match mine. Example number one, pause the video if you need more time. Example number two, pause the video if you need more time. Example number three. Okay, hopefully you still have room for one more example on page 17. We're going to look at a straight translation uh, that will also be included in your homework tonight. So here is the example. 17 is 13 subtracted from three times a number find the number, right? So we're going to translate this like you just saw, but we only need to find one number. 17 is, so that means 17 equals 
13 subtracted from means something needs to come in front of the 13 three times a number, which I don't know, so I'll call 3n. So also on your homework tonight, you need to translate like this. Use your inverse properties to solve. And find your final solution. So my mystery number was 10. Okay, here's the last example for you. Question number four. Pause the video, copy the question, translate, use your properties of equality to solve. When you're finished, unpause the video to check your response. Okay, now that you've had a chance to try them, did you get this solution? All right, that concludes this tutorial. This is your homework assignment for the evening. Please make sure to write your solutions out on a separate sheet of white line paper. Good luck.